Welcome to my second Pittsburgh Steelers NFL mock draft. So, the draft is almost a month away, and the Pittsburgh Steelers still have some major needs on the roster they have yet to not filled throughout free agency. So this draft is going to be more oriented around the Pittsburgh Steelers needs, but also based off the selections I would want to see happen per round. Before I get more into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you get notified with everything Pittsburgh Steelers news all throughout free agency and the draft. Also, like the video. Let's get right back into it. So, with the first selection in the first round, pick number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kool-Aid McKinstry. So, a need for the Steelers has been cornerback. Yes, they also traded for Dante Jackson, but as of right now on their roster, they have Joey Porter Jr. and Dante Jackson, Corey Trice, and Rush. Those other last two guys I named, Rush and Trice, they really don't have much experience at NFL level. So basically, they have Dante Jackson and Joey Porter Jr. So adding another cornerback is more than likely going to happen. And Kool-Aid McKinstry is a cornerback from Alabama. He stands at 5'11.5 inches and he weighs 199 pounds. His arm length is 32 inches. His hand size is 8.5 inches. So some accomplishments that he has is he won AP First Team All-American in both 2022 and 2023. He's First Team All-SEC in 2022 and First Team All-SEC Punt Returner also in 2022. So some of the strengths that Kool-Aid McKinstry has is lateral agility. He has ability to play press man consistently. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers need. He also has smooth transitions and fluid hips being able to turn to either side. He's competitive at the catch point being able to break out some passes. And he's just a willing tackler in the run game. However, he does have some concerns. Which basically is he allows receivers to kind of stack him and get vertically on him. Covering physical receivers could be a problem in and out of breaks for him as well based off film and also just tracking the deep ball and just making plays on a long pass. But with Kool-Aid McKinstry, what you're getting is a smooth press man corner who usually wins with his quickness at the line of scrimmage with his feet and McKinstry understands that press man reps are won by using his feet, not only his hands. He uses his quickness and he shows the ability to use that and also uses hips to mirror receivers in their release without even having to get his hands on them. He doesn't even have to get his hands on you to press you because of how quick he is. And from this press technique, McKinstry has shown to have two approaches when doing this. First one is being able to stay on top of the receiver while staying in a good position to break down on any cut, cutback or the kind of stick route that the wide receiver does or just any break in general. And number two is he can play in the trail technique very well. In the trail technique, McKinstry shows that he has good patience in terms of looking to jump underneath on any inbreaker or underneath route and kind of jump the pass to either get a pass breakup or interception. Like I said, he has fluid hips, so he maintains kind of a great body control, which keeps him in position to contest the ball, whichever direction it is or wherever it's thrown. Also, McKinstry is a corner who is competitive at the catch point and will fight for the pass breakup or even get the interception. So that's something he does very well. He uses his high level athletic ability and there's also an element of physicality to his game. And McKinstry shows that well in run, stu run support as well and is willing and effective tackler on the boundary. He's not really as well in terms of the run game, but he's able to make the play and be able to make the tackle against any wide receiver. He's not afraid of that. He also shows the ability to be an effective blitzer who has a fearless attacking attitude, blitzing and being disruptive. And we all know that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers like doing sometimes with their cornerbacks. Not so much outside cornerbacks, but more so their slot cornerbacks. Kind of blitz them off the edge and just send an extra guy with a blitz scheme. However, there are also many elements of McKinstry's skill set that makes him a high-level corner. There are elements of his game that need to prove. For example, when McKinstry jumps into his trail technique, sometimes he appears to be given 
too much separation to his opponents, making making it very hard for him to catch back up. He also lets him that kind of lets him beat him vertically. That's why at the beginning of the video, the beginning of this film, the kind of process, I said that he's not too good on deep deep balls because he does play in a trail technique. And when the ball is thrown perfect perfectly, and you're in that trail technique, the receiver is already by you, and it makes it hard for him to catch up. So sometimes he's chasing instead of being in a position to actually locate the ball. And at a college level, that's fine. But in the NFL level, sometimes that's an issue when quarterbacks are more, more consistent week in and week out and on more plays. So McKinstry appears also to have speed, but obviously sometimes that could be a problem. Overall, McKinstry has a plus level athletic attributes, which allows him to be a really good quarterback in this league. He also runs like a 4.45 second 40 yard dash time. So that's pretty good for a cornerback, especially in this day and age with very fast and quick receivers. And he is projected to be a day one pick, a round one pick. The Pittsburgh Steelers have met with him. And this is a guy I would really like to see the Pittsburgh select at that pick number 20 spot. And it would also fill a very big need and have someone next to Joey Porter Jr. on the boundary. And then maybe you could put Dante Jackson in the slot, even though that's not really his natural position. But just having three cornerbacks, I think, is a need for the Steelers and would be a big upgrade compared to the, what their room looked like last season. So with pick number 20, the Steelers selected Kool-Aid McKinstry. Now, moving over to round two. With the 51st overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Zach Frazier, offensive center, West Virginia. So, Zach Frazier was a selection of mine in the first mock draft that I did, mainly because the Steelers do not have a center on the roster, and I wasn't really a fan of picking a center in round one when there are better options on the board. So in round two, the Steelers get their center of the future and impact starter right away, in Zach Frazier. So he stands at 6 foot 2.5 inches. He weighs 313 pounds. His arm length is 32 and 1 fourth inches. His hand size being 10 and 7 eighth inches. And he could be a starter right away. He's a plug and play guy and he would excel in a gap scheme as he offers strength and kind of leverage to move defenders in the run game. So some of his accomplishments is he was AP second team all big 12 in 2022 and he was academic all big 12 in 2022 as well he's also been a three-star recruit so Zach Frazier he's actually the second ranked center in this year's draft behind Jackson Powers Johnson for me and some of his strengths that he shows is his grip strength he is an anchor able to set the anchor and hold it and his pad level so his concerns, however, is his lateral mobility and his length in terms of arm length and stuff like that. Looking at what he does well, he is from West Virginia and he's been a stalwart along the interior of their offense line ever since the moment he stepped foot to their campus. He started as a true freshman and left guard before transitioning to inside center. For a sophomore in junior seasons with the team. Looking at Frazier and how he's built, he's densely built, meaning that he's a really good center of gravity to him, and that is key because he is a former wrestler and it certainly shows when looking at the film with his game. He's an excellent run blocker who comes off the ball fast and with his pads being low to quickly gain leverage on the people that he's defending, the defenders, the defense linemen, whoever. He has excellent hand use also because of that wrestling background and the inside chest plate and has the outstanding grip strength to control and kind of steer a defender exactly where he's supposed to go and put him to the ground if he needs to. So Fraser, he's connected to defenders all the time. The rep is usually over once he gets his hands on you because he displays good power at the point of attack and can kind of generate movement off the ball. He's a really strong player and he's just an average athlete in terms of his mobility and stuff of that, his feet, and he sometimes he struggles to connect on moving targets because it's out in space, but sometimes you just need a center who's just going to play solidly 
And that's what Fraser does. He may not be the excellent athlete that you're looking for in terms of a Mason Cole who was able to get into space or a Kendrick Green who was drafted to get into space as well. Sometimes you just miss on those guys because they don't know what they're doing with their hands and what they're doing in terms of actually blocking. Yes, you could get a good athlete, but can you get a good run blocker and pass blocker? And that's what you're getting with Zach Frazier, just a solid guy who's very intelligent and his awareness is very, very high. He stays on balance. You don't have to worry about him being off balance. And he's able to diagnose stunts and everything like that in the past game seamlessly. His low center of gravity also, like I said, allows him to anchor in kind of bull rushes. It's not just good in the run game if he needs to hold someone in a certain spot, but also in terms of the pass game in those bull rushes. He's la he lacks that arm length, like I said, but able to get low and win defenders based off his intelligence is going to be quick and easy part of his game to transfer to the NFL level. So he has very good traits. And he's a starter level player right out the gate. With that being said, the Pittsburgh Steelers get their center of the future. Their franchise guy, Zach Frazier, in round two, pick number 51. Now, moving over to the next selection in the third round. The last selection I'm going to do in this mock draft is pick number 83. And the Pittsburgh Steelers select wide receiver Ricky Parcell. So, he's a wide receiver from Florida. And he slots into the Pittsburgh Steelers as a really nice pick. He stands at 6'1", 189 pounds, and his arm length is 30 and 7 8 inches, his hand size being 9 and 1 4 inches. So Ricky Purcell is also a fast wide receiver. And the Steelers really need a wide receiver who's both a big body and is just able to be everything that they need them to be. Looking at his accomplishments... He is SEC first year academic honor roll in 2022 and 2023. And in 2022, he won Pac 12 All Conference Honorable Mention. So, Ricky Purcell, he's an alignment versatile wide receiver that has high IQ and instincts that allow him to consistently win and be a reliable receiver option. His strengths as a wide receiver is his catch in traffic kind of hands and his versatile alignment like I said inside outside and just having a high IQ some of the concerns that he does have though is when he's played against press man and just being able to create separation vertically looking at what he does very well is throughout his tenure in the University of Florida Purcell established himself as kind of the go-to option for the offense of Florida Purcell has been used in kind of multiple alignments there as he has been connected effort to get Purcell the ball and just allow him to make plays. So wherever he is lined up, whether that's inside, outside, the kind of game plan was just getting the ball and allow him to make plays after the catch. Purcell has established himself as a reliable option for all the quarterbacks that he's had, showcasing the ability to consistently get open against zone coverage. So even though he has not like kind of been overly well in terms of man coverage and beating defenders deep, getting open in slants and his own coverage, everything like that, he does at a very high level. Also, one of the reasons why I pick him here for the Pittsburgh Steelers is because they have met with him and actually did have like a top 30 visit with him, meaning that they highly rank him on the draft boards at the wide receiver position because you only get limited players in that top 30 visit. So from the snap, Purcell has multiple releases and can win with power and kind of his speed and tempo at the line of scrimmage, kind of getting into his route. In his route, Purcell does a good job of mixing his tempo and keeping the defenders off balance, not knowing what he's gonna do next in his route tree and his running. Purcell is a high IQ player. Like I said, there's some players where you run a route and you're running the route based off that certain route, but you don't know what you're doing in the middle of your route. Sometimes you have to switch it up because of where the defender is guarding you. So he has that ability to use his route running in the middle of his route and kind of break it off if he needs to and end up getting to the right spot 
and breaking away from the defender. So he keeps his defenders off balance and he just knows how to find the soft spot in zone coverages and throw down to remain uncovered for the quarterback. So that's why he's always an open target for whichever quarterback is throwing him the ball. Purcell has shown an element of his toughness and kind of his focus to his game in that he consistently makes catches in traffic. Sometimes players struggle with that. They can only catch the ball if they're wide open. Well, no, he has great hands and is able to catch it in any situation possible. And he wins elevated catch point all the time. After the catch, he can also pick up very big yardage because of his elusiveness and his quickness and just because of his power to run through arm tackles. Making the first defender miss in space is one of the key things for him. So that's what he does really well. Some of the limitations in his game appear to be his vertical speed. He's very good at horizontal speed and everything like that, but his vertical speed seems to be rough. Even though he does run a really good 40-yard dash time in the 4.36 second kind of range, although Purcell could be categorized as a playmaker, his limitation is separating on vertical routes, his big play down the field kind of routes isn't really what's going to make him a big time player in the NFL. Obviously, he could improve on that greatly as he does have a tendency to get open, but overall Purcell is a prospect who can be a reliable receiving option in the NFL and it seems someone the Pittsburgh Steelers are very interested in and hopefully he would be available in the third round pick number 84. He may not be, so I'm just slotting this in as a player who the Pittsburgh Steelers like and making him available at pick number 84. So that's my selection with the Pittsburgh Steelers' first third round pick. With that being said, that's the end of the mock draft. Let me just recap it really quickly. Pick number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select in the very first round, Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. And then in the second round, pick number 51, the Steelers get their center of the future, and Zach Frazier from West Virginia. And then in the third round, they get wide receiver Ricky Purcell. From Florida so they fill all the needs that they had both at cornerback center and also the wide receiver position and with that being said that's the end of the mock draft let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on all three of these selections would you pick someone else let me know your mock draft down in the comments below and how do you feel about my selections for the Pittsburgh Steelers are they good are they not good or would you do something differently also make sure you subscribe to the channel Turn on notifications so you get notified with everything Pittsburgh Steelers updates and everything like that. I covered all of free agency. I'll continue to cover all of it along with the draft coming up and every player we get giving you introductions to them. I'll continue to do mock drafts as we lead up to the draft with different selections every time kind of looking at something new. Go check out the first mock draft. It was a completely different one. The only pick being the same was the center. So with that being said, let's end this video and I'll see you guys all later. Till the next one, I'm out. Peace.